last trade, which was probably the weirdest trade, the Jaguars traded for Calvin Ridley. They give up a fifth round pick this year, and then what could become a second round pick. It's a lot of incentives. Basically, if he meets certain incentives, it'll be a fourth round pick. If he signs a contract with extension with them, it'll become a 2024 pick. So a lot of a lot of what ifs for this trade. But overall, on paper, Falcons get a fifth and a second for Calvin Ridley, who hasn't played and is suspended for the rest of the year. By the time he returns, he'll be two years gone from the NFL. This is a big swing for the Jaguars. If he plays the way he did, you know, at this point two years ago, this will be a good move for the Jags overall. But kind of kind of a weird trade. And I'm kinda kinda on the fence about whether this is like a awesome move for the Jags, to be honest. Yeah, if he plays great, it's gonna be awesome. And I think this is a smart move for the Jags because I don't think you want to win now. I think the Jags have seen enough to realize they're not going to be a playoff team this year. Even if they make the playoffs, they're not going to do anything. But what would be beneficial is getting close losses and Trevor learning this year, Trevor getting some confidence. We don't need to win every single game. Um, We'll win a few games here and there, but we're going to focus on getting a high draft pick acquiring assets for next year and Calvin Ridley, someone who's going to play next year. And then if you have another high, say above the 14th pick in the draft to add to either your defense or your offense, then you get another weapon. Maybe you drive a beast, uh, draft a beast tight end, um, some more weapons on the offensive line. I think this is great because you get to tank a little bit this year. You get a star receiver for a fifth round pick. Who are you going to spend a fifth round pick on? It's like, Okay, that's like, I don't know if this guy's going to make a roster pick, but we'll see. So it's like, this is great. That's a good point. And with that incentive, that 2024 pick will be at worst a fifth round pick and at best a second round pick. Second round pick's a little bit different, but for Calvin Ridley, like I mentioned, this comes down to if he's that guy. If he's still that guy, this will be a great deal for them. Yeah, and it's like first year, Josh Allen. Pretty horrendous. Second year, okay, we see it. Same thing with Jalen Hurts. Third year, takes off because they get him Stephon Diggs. Well, now you get Trevor, uh, top 10 receiver previously, fantasy-wise, um, performance stats. He's up there. And then you have Christian Kirk. You're going to have a high first-round draft pick this year because you're not very good. And Trevor's still learning, and it's his second year. Uh, after dealing with the worst coach in history. So now this is a real foundational piece for the Jags where you just gave up a fifth round pick for first round quality. Yeah, that's a good point. I think, I guess it remains to be seen how well this will go for him, but I'm excited to see. Very interesting though. Yeah, because now what will happen is it'll be Kelvin Ridley and Christian Kirk, which better wide receiver core than what they had because the number two was Zay Jones, Marvin Jones, one of the Joneses, <laughs> Mac Jones. The fact that it's um, Kirk Jones Jones for the receivers or Jones Kirk Jones. Yeah, like that's. I mean, it's like Christian Kirk was the three in Arizona. And here's the fourth option if you include um, Zach Ertz. Which I would. Yeah, so it's like D Hop, Rondo Moore, um, Christian Kirk. James Conner, like, you weren't the guy, and you didn't show up at all in the playoffs. You and Rondo Moore literally ran into each other. Yeah, that was... How did that even happen? Like, how does that happen? Yeah, I don't 